Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over an absolutely beautiful variation of Ubuntu called Ubuntu Kylin. Now this version of Ubuntu was made primarily for the Chinese market as by default when you load up the live disk, everything is in Mandarin Chinese and they use the simplified Chinese writing system. But you can see on the screen right here is kind of the install process I had to go through to get this up and running. And if you are at all familiar with the Ubuntu install, you will be able to get through it at least to the point where you can switch it to English within the installation. If that is what you want to do, if you're a Chinese user, then you will be good to go. This is probably one of the operating systems you may want to go with. So the primary purpose of this video is just kind of overview the visual display and some of the applications it comes with. Now, this operating system is beautiful. It has a very very similar layout and formatting to Windows 10 but it's a little more polished and kind of an elementary OS crossed with Windows 10 kind of feel. You can see down here it looks very familiar all the way up to how the time and layouts formatted but if we go ahead and open some of these you can see just how good everything looks. If I click right here actually I'll get into that feature in just a moment but you can see if I click right here to get to my notifications the notification center kind of slides out kind of like Bungie OS but this is just solely dedicated to notifications so that's absolutely beautiful you can see here we have some network settings the volume controls the sounds are kind of cool so if I go ahead and click on that you can see it's just little droplets and then right here is where you can use a virtual keyboard if need be. One item that's really striking to me is how the file system is laid out. So if I go ahead and open up my home folder, you can see right here, this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. And everything when it comes to these panels is customizable. You can drag and drop everything as is. But just the Explorer overall is super functionable. You can see right here it has tabbing. So you could have multiple tabs open with different directories. So you can be bouncing back and forth really, really easy in between things. Right here it displays the directory that you're currently in. And if you go up here, you can actually copy and paste that. You have search functionality to search throughout files on your system. Right here, it just looks good. It has the same layout as Windows 10 right here. You have shortcuts to create a folder, open the terminal. So if I go ahead and open that up, you can kind of see what's going on here when it comes to the visuals of it. Um, I'm going to go into more of this file directory, but one thing I wanted to show you is this right here. A lot of operating systems have a dark theme option. Well, almost all operating systems have a dark theme option. But this one really is good about having it so you can just click a button and switch to that dark theme. You can see I just did one single click and it switches the theme of the entire desktop environment to dark. Now also before I get too far in the desktop environment, we can see right here is the UK UI 3.0, which is a desktop environment solely created for Ubuntu Kylin. And I'll have a link in the description to this page so you can kind of see all the different features. See the icons are absolutely beautiful. Whoever designed them did a wonderful job. And this is going over the file manager. Everything we're about to go over just now. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to switch it back to the light theme with a single click and we are back to the light theme. Over here you have how everything is viewed. So you do icon list, you can change the order. Right here, if you click on this, you have a edit menu, which will allow you to cut, copy, paste, show hidden, and a couple other settings. One thing I do notice about this operating system, unlike something like Pop OS, this is very mouse dependent, meaning that the there probably are shortcut keys, but they don't make it so you want to learn them because everything is available at a click of a mouse. Go ahead and close this out. If I click right here, this is the show task view, which will open up the virtual desktop so you can switch in between. So I'll just stay on desktop one for now. And if I go down here, this is where it's really beautiful is the start menu. You can see here by default, it has a transparent look and all the applications right here are available and it seems to be in order of the most used. If you go down here, you can switch it to alphabetical order or you can click this one and switch it to categories. So internet, video, images, and it goes through all the applications. Now going through the applications that come with it, I don't know some of these because some of these are more for the Chinese market, 
but we have Firefox and Mozilla Software's Cheese Burner, uh, Video Rhythm Box, a couple games, uh, calculators. They use their uh, WPS Office Suite. Well, I don't know if it's particularly theirs, but it is a really, really good one. It reminds me a lot of Microsoft Office. I think that's the overall goal for this operating system, is to be as similar to Microsoft as they can be. You can see if I didn't have this top menu here and I just saw this, I would bet money that we were in Microsoft Office. So that's just a quick example of the file office suite that comes with it. I'll give you another example and go ahead and open up their version of spreadsheets. So you can kind of see what it looks like, create a new document. And here we are, it looks incredibly similar and all the functionality seems to be really similar to what Microsoft Office has to offer. So if you are even just a regular Windows user, this may be an operating system you want to consider if you want essentially a straight clone of Windows 10. Going back into the start menu, let's go back by categories. That was the office and then we have some system tools. So we have the disk usage analyzer. Go ahead and open that up. Everything is kind of custom themed and custom skinned, so it just all looks good. You can see the loading screen here, and it gives you a really good display of exactly how your file system is broken up and where everything is. Go back into our start menu, and we will scroll down. There's a lot more system tools, the terminals, passwords and keys, user guides. It has a full user guide, which is really helpful, and it is in English, even though this is a... Um, primarily Chinese-based system. They did really well on the translations. One thing I want to point out with the Windows 10 clone thing, this is almost the exact same icon as the Windows Explorer icon. So I think the only real difference is maybe some of the corners are a little bit different, but I thought that was funny. They have technical support, so you go to their website. Uh, they have their software center. So if I go ahead and pop that open, you can see a overview of how everything is and looks go back and let's check out some of these programs actually let's go to that software center and see what it looks like so the kylan software center go ahead and open that up and everything here the animations the just everything is absolutely beautiful let's not update it for now just so we can hurry on and jump in here and this is running english but you can see this could be an issue most of this is in chinese here so if they did translate this to English, I'm pretty sure they would have a much larger grab on the market, especially for the first time Linux users. So that's something they may want to focus on, especially in some of these applications that aren't as easy to translate. But you do see here, you can get around and know what's going on. You have GIMP, you have the descriptions, the download times. If you go ahead and click install, it will ask you for your password, of course. Go ahead and authenticate that and it will begin the installation process. Going back, we are going to go into the control panel real quick, which is right here through this little settings gear button. Open that up and we will have a really clean, organized control panel menu. Like I said, shockingly familiar to how Windows 10 looks. If we go into our system, you have some options here. So the, the display, you can see all the different display settings, default applications. So you can jump in here and change what will open with what files some power settings, the auto boot, so what will exactly boot with your system. If you go ahead and go down this tree here, you have your devices, so you go ahead and manage that. Your desktop background, so they do have a couple of pretty ones here. So for example, if I were to go with this one, you can see that's just cool. I'm actually gonna keep that for this virtual machine. Um, the theming, so from here you can switch it to the light or dark. So you could switch it there if you'd like to. Here is your icons, so you can go through and see how beautiful these icons actually are. Some cursor themes with a wide variety of options. You have screen lock, so you can change the interface and do some other settings, change the lock screen background, font screen saver. You can choose what is and isn't on your desktop. Just overall, everything's really clean and easy to navigate. You got network settings, account settings, some time date settings, so the actual date time and the area that you are in. Some update settings, so you can use this to check for an update. So if I go ahead and click on this, it will run through and it'll check for updates from both Ubuntu and the developers of this flavor of Ubuntu. 
and you can see that there are updates available so if I saw the detail of these updates it has various security updates other updates the update system within this operating system is awesome for now I'm going to remind me later so we can jump down to the information here are some notice settings but right here we have about so we can see that we are running Ubuntu Kylin 20.04 long-term support and we're running the UK UI desktop. Go ahead and tell me what you think of this operating system down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about it. Like I said I think that if they got around to doing much better Chinese to English translations this would have a pretty strong hold on the Linux market, especially for the users coming from Windows 10 to the Linux community, just because of its familiarity. And when I say familiarity, I'm not meaning it's slightly familiar. I mean, it is virtually a polished clone of Windows 10. I absolutely love it. I'm not going to be using it because I personally prefer Manjaro at the moment. I've been really, really happy with that operating system. But for somebody who is coming from Windows 10 and you don't mind the kind of Chinese workaround with some of the native applications, you are going to love this. If you are a native Chinese speaker, reader, writer, this might actually be the best operating system for you to go with, depending on your visual preferences and how you generally have your workflow laid out. So that about wraps that up. For more videos like this, please subscribe and ring that bell. I will be doing more Linux distribution overviews like this. Coming soon, I'll have a top 10 Linux applications for content creators with a couple other YouTubers featured in that. So subscribe for that. I hope you have a great day. Please hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out tremendously to make more content like this. Once again, have a great day and goodbye.